Ladies and gentlemen of the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be talking about graphics card news because quite a few developments have happened over the last few days or so. And despite the fact that I've been really tied up with the PlayStation 4 Neo, the Xbox Next, and God goodness knows what else, I figure it's a good time to start catching up now. We've got some earnings reports from AMD and NVIDIA are starting to make some announcements. I figure we might as well start catching up a little bit. So... First things first, AMD are reinforcing the claim that, well, we're going to be seeing Polaris in June, which is obviously a good thing. There have been a lot of rumours regarding this, in fact, we've, we've had them really since the beginning of the year, but even the CEO now of AMD, they haven't given an exact release date, like they've not said, you know, June the 15th or something like that, but... They have basically hinted that they will be coming mid this year, which, well, June is pretty damn mid this year, right? On top of that, we finally, AMD released a roadmap. Now, a roadmap is very simple. What products are launching at what year? So in 2015, we obviously saw the release of the Fury series. We saw the 300 series. So for example, in this case, it would be the Fury X, it would be the 390, and then a very brief overview of some of the um, features of that card for example hbm with radeon fury asynchronous compute free sync and 28 nm 2016 however is very clearly showing polaris 10 and polaris 11 now you can see the stack is polaris 10 on top polaris 11 at the bottom with gcn fourth generation hevc decode and encode hdmi 2.0 and dp display port 1.3 and finally of course 14 nm then we have vega coming in 2017 with hbm2 that very descriptive i'm sure you'll agree and even more descriptive navi next gen memory i'm 100 percent know what that means I did actually question Robert Halleck regarding that in a recent interview that I put out, but unfortunately he wasn't able to shed any light on it for obvious reasons. Well, it's always worth asking, right? Unfortunately, things are not quite as simple, because you could look at that and you could say, well, okay, Polaris 10, obviously the boxes go all the way up to where Polaris, uh, I'm sorry, where Fury is uh, allocated so you can almost say that they're a like for like replacement right well there's also a statement that was released amd demonstrated its polaris 10 and 11 next generation gpus with polaris 11 targeting the notebook market and polaris 10 aimed at the mainstream desktop and high-end gaming notebook segment Polaris architecture based GPUs are expected to deliver over a two point so a two times performance per watt improvement over current generation products and are designed for intensive workloads including 4K playback and virtual reality slash VR. Now the thing that's a bit weird is the fact that they actually have um, the phrase mainstream because mainstream is a little bit of a loose term when it comes to press releases and hardware what i mean by that is mainstream can mean anything from the let's say the 270 the r72 the 270 range all the way up to something like the r9 380 or 380x it's quite a broad term now the other problem is even if that is the case so let's say for the sake of argument the Polaris 10 is the equivalent of the R9 480 or even the 480X. Unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily mean much because we don't know how much performance the Polaris is going to have over the current generation of cards. For example, let's say you have 20 GCN units with the R9 Actually, let's just say with GCN3, let's just make it really simple. You've got 20 uh, CU units, and then you've got 20 CU units with Polaris 10, or Polaris as a whole. Well, obviously the workloads, the amount of performance difference with Polaris is going to be a lot higher. So, it could be that the 20 CU's compute units of Polaris 10, or Polaris the architecture as a whole, 
could be the equivalent of 30 compute units with the older architecture or it could be the equivalent of 25 compute units or it could be 22 compute, unit, compute units or it could be 50,000 compute units. My point being that we don't have an exact like-for-like -like comparison right now. You can't just say, well, Polaris, um, you know, this Polaris card has, I don't know, 36 compute units and its clock speed is X and it has this number of ROPs, this many, you know, texture mapping units and all that stuff and then just say, well, that's what the performance is going to be and has this bandwidth. Well, you can't say that because there are so many different efficiency improvements with Polaris and the same for Pascal. I'm also including Pascal in this as well. You can't just say, well, you know, it has this number of shaders and do a like for like comparison. So for the sake of argument, the mid-range of Polaris or the mid-range of Pascal could be the equivalent of the high end for the current cards. So for the sake of argument, if you're talking, let's use an NVIDIA example, the GTX 1070 could be the equivalent of the GTX 980 or 980 tie. I'm not saying it is. I just want to clarify that. I'm not saying that you should, you know, go in here expecting to buy like the GTX 1060 or the, you know, the 470 and end up with Fury X or the Titan level of the performance. I'm more saying that mainstream doesn't necessarily equal disappointment or bad performance. In fact, it could just mean because they are targeting this to virtual reality, it could mean that we're just going to see an awful lot of performance given that particular price point. Unfortunately, the wording is just very ambiguous, which sucks, to be honest with you. I mean, from what I, when I discussed Polaris with Robert, um, he did confirm that a Polaris GPU, a Polaris 10 GPU, just to be clear, was what was responsible for running Hitman with all the settings at max at 1440p. That's an intensive task. You know, you're not going to do that on a low-end card. So what I'm saying is, if that's their version of mid-range, that's pretty damn good. But, unfortunately, all we can do at the end of the day is just wait for the cards, whether it's Pascal, whether it's Polaris, to be released, and then we can get a better idea of where they actually fall in the GPU lineup. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.